The Haunted Mansion is a dark ride attraction located at Disneyland, which opened in 1969. Disneyland's Haunted Mansion opened to the public on August 9, 1969. In the 1950s, a Disney legend named Harper Goff scouched out a rundown building atop of a hill overlooking Main Street. Fellow Imagineer Ken Anderson was chosen to expand on the idea, building a storyline and a plan for a haunted building to take its place in New Orleans Square. The old and tired building would be complete with boarded up windows and doors, overgrown weeds and plants, as well as bats and screeching cats. Walt Disney was interested in the concept, but he didn't like the idea of having a dilapidated building in the middle of this beautifully architectured park. A visit to the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California provided the perfect inspiration and before long, Anderson imagined storylines for the expansive mansion-style building. Plans were made to build a New Orleans-themed land in a small transition area between Frontierland and Adventureland. Weeks later, New Orleans Square appeared on the souvenir map and promised a thieves' market, a pirate wax museum, and a haunted house walkthrough. The house was inspired by the now demolished Shipley Lidecker House in Baltimore City, Maryland. Built in 1803, the white brick mansion featured Italian style columns and double wraparound porches with cast iron railings. Construction began in 1962 and the exterior was completed the next year. The attraction was previewed in the 1965 episode of Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, but the attraction itself did not open until 1969. The six-year delay owed heavily to Disney's involvement in the New York World's Fair in 1964 through 1965 and to an attraction redesign after Walt's death in 1966. One of the early concepts during the planning and building stages was the Museum of the Weird, designed by Imagineer Raleigh Crump. It was conceived of initially as sort of a lobby area for the Haunted Mansion, but expanded into more of a standalone walkthrough attraction adjacent to the mansion grounds. However, Walt's death led to the projects being scrapped. Imagineers produced the audio animatronics figures, props, and set pieces for both Disneyland and Walt Disney World versions of the Haunted Mansion at the same time. Knowing that the Florida attraction would open less than two years after its Anaheim predecessor, Paul Fries provided the voice of the ghost host, also providing voices for Ludwig von Drake the Pillsbury Doughboy, and many of the Pirates of the Caribbean, including the infamous Auctioneer. During the initial planning stages, Imagineers had toyed with the idea that the Haunted Mansion would be a water attraction. In fact, Imagineer and Disney legend Claude Coates briefly developed the water ride version of the Haunted Mansion in which guests would float through the ruins of an old plantation house partially submerged in a Louisiana bayou. Sounds a lot like Pirates of the Caribbean. And for those who are watching right now and thinking, hmm, I'm going to be making a comment and say that I'm pronouncing Caribbean wrong when I should be saying Caribbean, I will apologize ahead of time. When we were growing up in the 1970s and 80s, before the Johnny Depp movies, we would call the ride Pirates of the Caribbean. The Haunted Mansion's infamous eye wallpaper, long credited to Imagineer Mark Davis, was actually a collaboration between the Museum of the Weird creator Raleigh Crump 
and Claude Coates. Disney legend and Imagineer Leota Toombs is the face of the psychic medium who floats in the crystal ball in the seance circle. She is voiced by Eleanor Audley Zellman, who is also the voice of Lady Tremaine and Maleficent in the Disney animated movies Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty, respectively. The infamous Phantom Five, the five singing Phantom Heads sitting on busts in the graveyard of the Haunted Mansion, had names. Rolo Rumpkin, Uncle Theodore, Cousin Algernon, Ned Nub, and Phineas Pock. It was suggested early on that the Haunted Mansion would be a walkthrough attraction, but the Imagineers objected to a walkthrough attraction's low capacity, going so far as suggesting building two identical attractions to accommodate twice as many guests. A solution appeared with the development of the Omnimover system, which was originally designed for the adventure through inner space. It was renamed the Doom Buggy. The system's continuous chain of semi-enclosed vehicles offered higher capacity. The cars could be set to rotate in any direction at any point, allowing the Imagineers to control what the guests saw and heard. Because each car held from one to three people, it was a convenient way to divide guests into smaller groups, a better fit with the story of people wandering alone through a haunted house. The attraction's theme song was called Grim Grinning Ghost, which was composed by Buddy Baker with lyrics by Estencio. Different versions of it can be heard in nearly every area of the ride. The pipe organ seen in the ballroom sequence is the very same one that James Mason as Captain Nemo played in the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Another imagineering feat of the Haunted Mansion is the stretch elevator. As you are ushered through the foyer, or to other people it's called the foyer, and into one of the two portrait rooms as some call it, yes there are two in each mansion on either side of the fireplace. You may notice that the room has no windows and no doors, making the space seem eerie. The next thing you may have heard is the Haunted Mansion butlers and maids moving you to the dead center of the room. This is so you and the other Disney Park guests can see most of the four portraits as they stretch and change. A purposeful and yet fancy pre-show mechanism. Each gargoyle holds candles in the dim room to direct your attention to each stretching portrait. You notice less of the illusion taking place around you. Employee previews of the mansion were held on August 6th, 7th, and 8th, followed by soft openings on August 9th and 10th, where limited numbers of park guests were allowed to ride. A midnight press event was held on the evening of August 11th, and the mansion opened to all guests on August 12th, 1969. One feature on opening day that was only there briefly was the Hatbox Ghost. He was a classy gentleman who held a cane in one hand and a hat box in the other. Imagineers wanted to provide a lingering callback to the Sleepy Hollow mythology once explored for the Haunted Mansion. Their ghastly creature would literally lose his head as the doom buggy approached, and the rider would receive a shocking surprise when the head reappeared in the hat box. The technology employed for this particular trick failed. Even before opening day, there was a slew of problems with the lighting, and the lighting was what guaranteed that the head would appear in the box. Initial reception was mixed. There were technical problems with several parts of the ride, most famously the Hatbox Ghost. Also, some Doom Buggy riders complained that it wasn't scary enough, which proved that no matter which way Disney Imagineers chose to go with the attraction, a part of the population would feel disappointment. Had the ride been scarier, others surely would have complained about the Haunted Mansion being unfit for small children. The Haunted Mansion eventually became one of the most beloved attractions first at Disneyland and later Walt Disney World and the other Disney theme parks across the globe. Over the years, 
The Haunted Mansion has had minor changes. In 1994, Disneyland's Haunted Mansion was updated. A phantom piano player sat at a rundown piano in the attic scene, whereas the original Faceless Bride was given a full-fleshed appearance. In 2001, a newer, more detailed safety spiel was added to the Doom Buggy's onboard audio as they left the loading area. The seasonal overlay, Haunted Mansion Holiday, also premiered in October, featuring characters from the 1993 film, The Nightmare Before Christmas. On November 26, 2003, the first adaptation, The Haunted Mansion, based on the attraction and starring Eddie Murphy, was released. In 2004, the seance room was updated so the crystal ball, with the talking head of Madame Leota, floated above its table rather than sitting stationary on it, with the original projection mapped effect replaced by a rear projection effect within the ball. Though the Disneyland Mansion is the original, the ride is somewhat shorter and lacks the interactive queue and some high-tech upgrades that the Walt Disney World version has. However, Disneyland has the infamous Hatbox Ghost, an impressive new animatronic that rematerialized in the mansion's attic in 2015, nearly 45 years after appearing briefly during the attraction's opening days and sparking generations of urban legends. On January 21st, 2020, Disneyland's Haunted Mansion was closed for an extensive refurbishment to add lighted steel panels, improved lighting, mechanical touch-ups, and new paint and trim to the exterior of the attraction. The refurbishment came with a refreshed pet cemetery, including new greenery and plants. The portrait gallery was given new drapes, curtains, and the loading area is much more decorative with wallpaper, and the return of one of the Haunted Mansion's original portraits being April to December, also featuring a statue of the one-eyed cat. The rest of the attraction was given repairs and new lighting. On July 28, 2023, the second adaptation, Haunted Mansion, was released nearly 20 years after the first movie was released in 2003. Hurry back, hurry back. Be sure to bring your death certificate. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks.